in the name of allah the most beneficent the most gracious and the most merciful welcome back to another lecture related to the reading of pip meets a convict before resuming to our reading here is a quick preview of the previous part of the story pip meets a convict this is in the form of video a man is reading all the extract which we have read before the whole extract he will read in front of you so go and listen to that carefully Great Expectations by Charles Dickens retold by Florence Bell Chapter 1 In the Churchyard My name is Philip Pirrip but as a child I could not say my name I called myself Pip and that has been my name ever since I never knew my mother and father they both died when I was a baby I was brought up by my only sister who was married to a blacksmith, Joe Gargery. My story begins on a cold grey winter afternoon in the churchyard where my parents are buried. I would often go to their graves and look down at the words on their gravestone. Philip Pirrip and Georgiana, wife of the above. I was a sensitive and lonely child and was often sad. The marshes beyond the churchyard were grey. The river beyond the marshes was a darker line of grey. A bitter wind was blowing across the marshes from the sea. The graveyard was a dark and frightening place. I shivered. Cold and afraid, I began to cry. "Quiet, you little devil!" cried a terrible voice. "Keep still, or I'll cut your throat." A rough-looking man had taken hold of me. He held me tightly by the neck. Oh, don't cut my throat, sir, I cried. Please don't. The man's rough grey clothes were torn and muddy. Like me, he was shivering with cold. His shoes were old and broken. He had a torn piece of cloth tied round his head, and his eyes were wild and terrible. Tell me your name, the man growled. Tell me, quick. Pip, sir, Pip, I answered. Show me where you live," the terrible man demanded. I pointed towards our village, which was about a mile away from the churchyard. The man stared at me for a moment, then with a sudden movement, he picked me up and turned me upside down. A piece of bread fell out of my pocket. The man pushed me onto a gravestone, then he grabbed the bread and began eating greedily. I sat on the gravestone where he'd put me. shivering and crying with fear now tell me where's your mother the man in grey asked suddenly there sir i answered pointing over his shoulder to my mother's grave the man looked behind him and started to run i mean she's buried there sir that's my mother georgiana wife of the above oh i see the man said limping slowly back And is that your father there buried with your mother? Yes, sir, I replied. Then who do you live with? the man asked. That is, if I let you live, he said roughly. With my sister, sir. Mrs. Joe Gargery, wife of Joe Gargery, the blacksmith, sir. A blacksmith, is he? the man muttered, looking down at his leg. There was a thick band of iron round his ankle. with a broken chain hanging from the band the man came nearer he took hold of my arms and tipped me back over the gravestone as far as i could go his terrible eyes stared into mine now look here he said do you know what a file is yes sir then you get me a file and you get me some food do you understand yes sir
I hope it was clear into your minds. That was the previous part. And now let us start the next portion of the story. And you know what grub is? Yes, sir. After each question, he tilted me over a little more. This made me feel helpless. I was in danger. You get me a file, he tilted me again. And you get me grub, he tilted me again. You bring them both to me, he tilted me again. Or I'll have your heart and liver out, he tilted me again. On each and every question, he is tilting Pip towards the land or towards him and he is ordering him to bring this and bring that like bring grub food for him bring file for him to cut his chain i was dreadfully frightened and hoped that he would not drop me i clung to him with both hands he dipped me backwards and rolled me round so that the church seemed to jump over its own weathercock then still holding me up on the tombstone he went on what did he do after that jab wo kehta hai that yes I will bring these things to you. उसको roll करता है और जो church उसको उल्टी दिख रही थी Now it is straight. अब वो सीधी हो गई है Early tomorrow morning, bring the file and the grub. You bring the lot to me and that old battery over there. If you do it and you don't say a word about me i'll let you live if you fail or say anything at all about me then your heart and your liver shall be torn out roasted and eaten now i am not alone there's a young man hiding with me in comparison with him i am an angel usko kehta hai that you will bring all these things to me otherwise that other man who is hiding with me will have your heart and liver out he will roast those things and eat them up that young man can hear us now that young man has a secret way of getting at a boy and at his heart and at his liver he is saying that that young man is having some magical spells he can creep into anywhere and uh, he took what he want A boy can't hide himself from that young man. A boy may lock his door, may be warm in bed, may tuck himself up, may draw the clothes over his head, may think himself comfortable and safe, but that young man will softly creep and creep his way to him and tear him open. He is now telling the appearance of that young man that he can creep into you whether you are in your bed, whether you lock your door, but wherever you are, but he can tear you open. I am keeping that young man from harming you at the present moment with great difficulty I find it very hard to hold that young man off of your inside I am keeping him from getting into your body now what do you say ab tumhara kya kehna hai I was so frightened but I said that I would get him the file and I would get him what broken bits of food I could and I would come to him at the battery early in the morning promise on your life said the man i promised and he took me down from the top of the tombstone usko kehta hai ki promise karo ki tum ye sari cheeze mere paas wapas lekar aoge then pe promised aur phir wo usko tombstone se utha ke niche bitha deta hai and remember the battery it is the same fort in which the convict is hiding himself and he is demanding both the things from that little child to bring to him otherwise he will take his heart and liver out and will eat both the things and he is also threatening him with an other man hiding with him and that man is having some creepy magics would get into anywhere and take anything what he wants
Now he went on, remember that promise and remember that young man and get home. Go, go, go. Good night, sir, I stammered. That man is saying, prisoner is saying that remember that man, that he can creep into your body wherever you are and also remember your promise that you will bring file and grub for me. Pip stammered and say good night to him. It is going to be a long night for me, said he. He looked at the cold, wet, flat marsh. I wish I was a frog or an eel. He is wishing that maybe he is a reptile or a frog that he could live into that marshy area. He hugged his shuddering body in both his arms as if to hold himself together and limped towards the low church wall. He got over it slowly like a man whose legs were numbed and stiff and then turned round to look for me. When I saw him turning, I was frightened again and ran home without stopping. He hugged his body, that convict hugged his body with his arms. And then he pulled himself together and with the help of the church wall, he started walking with limping legs and now Pip was till now Pip was standing there and looking at him but when he saw that that man is going to look at Pip again he turned around he got frightened again and he ran towards his home without stopping here is the last line written over here adapted from great expectations by Charles Dickens that was already discussed that Charles Dickens is the writer of Victorian era. He was living at the reign of Queen Victoria. That's why his era is called Victorian era. And Great Expectation is the novel from which this text is taken. Here, I wanted to remind you about the writer of the story. He is Charles Dickens. His era was from 1812 to 1870. And he wrote a huge number of novels and stories that were very much popular in his lifetime and even now. He was known for creating wonderful character like her. The character of Pip is very wonderfully depicted in this story. Dickens wanted the world he lived into a better world and he wanted to change and reform that world with his writings. You can say that he was a remarkable writer of his times. And he campaigned for children's rights, education, and the reformation of the society to make it more equal. Let me quote one example of that time here, that previously in that time when Dickens were writing, was writing in his time, at that time, people were having chimneys at, in their homes because they were having that fiery things in their rooms to keep them warm the, at that time there were no heaters there in the world and they used fire for warming themselves and they used children to sweep those chimneys and those were called chimney sweepers because those children were too small to get into the chimneys and they used to uh, clean those chimneys at that time. That's why Dickens campaigned for children's rights, their education, and he was the one who spoke about child labor at that time. You can call him a rebellious writer as well of his era. So he was very much aware of the contemporary events which were happening at that time. So, like Oliver Twist, he wrote a novel, one more novel, whose protagonist, whose hero is a small kid. His name was Ollie, Oliver Twist, and he used to live in an orphanage, and he also told us about the atrocities of that uh, owner of the orphanage. And here, also, Pip is also afraid of a convict, and also in the next part of the story he told us about the atrocities of his um, brother-in-law Mr. Joe Gargeray. You can pronounce it 
it either way is Joe Gargare or Joe Gargare. Okay, now resuming towards our lecture, the next slide is about reviewing and recapping. Now, dear students, it is time for review. At first, what did we do? We had read about Charles Dickens, that he was from Victorian era, what was the time period of his, and what kind of novels he wrote. He campaigned for the children's right, and he wanted the society to be a better place for living. Then the background of great expectation that this story was very much famous for strong characterization of Philip, Pirip and the other characters as well. Then there was the story of Pip meets a convict, how he meet with him like Pip was standing one day at the graveyard, in the graveyard with the tomb stones and graves of his parents and then there was a convict he seized him by his chin and then he asked him to bring the file and grub and he terrified him that he is that with him there is another man who is standing with him hiding him and then he will creep into his body and he will take out his liver and heart and roast it and eat it and then pip run away from there to bring all the things and now for this story recap, you are going to watch a video. That video is the summary of the whole story. Good. Go. your noise you young dog or I'll cut your throat don't cut my throat sir please don't do it sir tell us your name quick Pip sir once more give it mouth Pip Pip sir where do you live point out the place Cheeks you got, eh? Damn me if I couldn't eat them. Hey, if I have half a mind to do it. You wouldn't do that, sir. Where's your mother? Yes, sir. Huh? Also, Georgiana, my mother. Met your father along with your mother. Sir? Look here. Who do you live with? Providing you kindly let her live, which I ain't made up my mind about. My sister, sir. Mrs. Joe Gargery. Wife of Joe Gargery the blacksmith, sir. Blacksmith, eh? Hey, yeah, look here. The question being whether you ought to be let to live. You know what a file is? Yes, sir. You know what Vittles is? Yes, sir. You get me a file, you get me Vittles, and you bring the lot to me tomorrow morning early. And you never dare to say a word to anyone concerning you haven't seen such a person as me. Not any person, some ever. And you shall be let to live. You fail. And you go from my words in any particular, no matter how small it might be, and your aunt, and your liver should be tore out, roasted, and at. Here. Before showing you the homework slide, here are some handwriting tips. 
for that you have to watch a video the topic that we are addressing today is handwriting it is a way or style of writing which is unique to individuals graphologists analyze a person's handwriting and give their personality traits many of us have a very neat and beautiful writing whereas many others struggle to create a good handwriting handwriting has a very important role to play during exams especially when it comes to a paper presentation even after writing the entire answer correctly many of us lose marks in exams just because of a poor or illegible handwriting well we don't fetch extra marks for good handwriting in exams but it definitely reflects confidence and makes it easier for the examiner to check your paper so friends without wasting any time let's quickly see some tips that will help you improve and create a better handwriting firstly what actually matters is your sitting posture especially your shoulders it should be very relaxed don't droop down or be very stiff sit comfortably and if you're a right-handed person place the right corner of the book or the page high or tilt the page towards your left and if you're a left-handed person place the left corner high or tilt the page towards the right next important thing is your grip or the way you hold your pen different individuals have a different style so prefer the one which you are comfortable with and use a soft grip don't hold your pen too tightly as it can lead to hand fatigue and pain next is the spacing of letters while you are writing keep the spacing between the letters and the words consistent now suppose you have a tendency to stick your letters too much so you may try to space it out a bit and if you write letters very far try to reduce it in short just be consistent also while writing do not apply excess pressure that it creates an impression on the next page use a soft grip and normal pressure further people use different slants for writing like some prefer left right or just writing it straight again here keep it consistent When we write something in a hurry, we tend to tangle letters. That is when your ascenders and descenders aren't written properly. So try avoiding that. Also, while writing, stop joining letters. Write each letter very clearly. Again, to implement all these you will have to practice writing daily initially while practicing try writing slowly and implement the required changes and then when you get a hang of it you can increase the speed another important thing which can indirectly influence your writing is the tool used for writing that is your pen or a pencil there are different pens available in the market with different nibs or tips like ball point pens gel pens ink pens pilot pens etc and use the one which you are most comfortable with and the one which gives a smooth flow to your writing and make sure that the ink doesn't smudge for exams we normally tend to buy new set of pens and write with it just on the day of the exam and we don't get a smooth flow So you may buy some extra pens and practice writing with it till it gives a smooth flow and a good speed. Well, that's it my friends. We hope that these tips will help you in improving your writing and present your paper very neatly. Dear students, that was all from the video. I hope this story is now pretty much clear into your minds. Now I want you to note down your homeworks, write them into your notebooks.
draw marginal lines write homework day and date after that start writing your homework the first part of your homework is write your ending of the story that how the story ends pip wapas aata hai ya nahi aata aapke khayal mein aage kya hoga discuss these points what will happen next How does Pip get the things the man wants? Pip file or grub कैसे हासिल करेगा और इस तक वापस लेकर आएगा What happens at their next meeting? आगे क्या होगा जब Pip वो चीजें वापस लेकर आ जाएगा या तो उसको वो चीजें मिलेंगी या नहीं मिलेंगी उसके बाद what next? आगे क्या होगा Thank you so very much. This was all for our today's class. You can find me on Zoom on my given ID which was displayed at the first of the lecture. Before saying Allah Hafiz to you people, here are some instructions for you. how to fight with coronavirus safety precautions against covid-19 what is covid-19 i want to tell you this co stands for corona vi stands for virus and d stands for disease so in full form it is coronavirus disease and 19 is because this virus spread in 2019 so that's why it is called covid-19 coronavirus disease 2019 and it is still into our world so how can we stay safe number 1 step number 1 is wash your hands regularly wash the hands according to the standards of who or you can follow the sunna of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam as well sneeze and cough into a tissue do not sneeze openly bin it immediately after sneezing into the tissue or coughing into the tissue throw it into the dustbin and then if you are not having the tissue sneeze or cough inside your elbow because you are not touching your food with your elbow that's why i recommend you to open and close the doors or switch on and off the lights with your elbow also sneeze into the elbow dear students take extra care of your parents and yourself in this pandemic and this is a global pandemic which is affecting everyone so for that stay strong and have strong belief on allah that this we will emerge through this pandemic and this pandemic cannot do any wrong with anyone till then till the next lecture stay safe stay home and keep extra good care of yourself allah hafiz